Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our make-along of our red squirrel as you can see it here in the kit. If you've got the kit you should be able to make along unless you're a little bit slower than me. We've allocated two hours for this uh, make-along for this tutorial but as with all of our live streams which it is today um, and it is I think it's the seventh today. Seventh of yeah, I think it's the seventh today. Oh, hang on a second. Let me. Yes, the seventh today, seventh of June, um, twenty twenty two. If you're watching this live, then um, obviously you're in it with me. Um, however, you can already go back as well if you're missing anything. It's just that you then obviously won't be live um up to speed with me, but. Any time in the future, if you're watching this outside the live stream, you can just pause me and uh, rewind and catch up if need be. But it is meant to be a make along. I have just made one um, squirrel this morning and uh, timed myself and I can do it easily in two hours. But um, I will be doing lots of chatting so you can catch up. But uh, we might be able to, uh, we might just have to tweak a few things and um, skip a bit. Right. Um, the kit is here. Now um, we've got the house full of people, so I say hello to some of you already. If any of you are watching who are um, from the Cumbria Wildlife Trust and you're watching live today on the 7th of June 2022, make yourself known because you will have had this kit as a um, incentive to join the Cumbria Wildlife Trust. Not that you need an incentive because it's an amazing charity that does amazing um, stuff. In fact, um, I'm based here in Gloucestershire and the Wildlife Trust is here today teaching uh, schools about British wildlife, I suppose. And there's plenty here at the Wilderness Centre. Um, and that doesn't even include my family. Um, all the other creatures that live here, um, all the wild stuff. And um, so let's say hello to some of you who are watching live. Um, it's because it's an hour longer, maybe not all of you can stay for the whole duration, but um, fingers crossed you're able to. We've got Carol here. Um, Ashley is here, Sandra, Karen. Karen says she will probably just watch today um, as she can never keep up with me. <laughs> Sorry. And um, uh, and her tips are great. I have a cup of tea, so I think I'm good to go. I haven't got a cup of tea. And the reason for that is that I don't think I can make it two hours without having to go to the loo. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to uh, completely dehydrate. So if I look slightly shriveled up and prunish, then that's um, because I haven't kept myself hydrated so I don't need to rush off to the loo. Um, Gina is there. Hi everyone. Actually managed to be here today. I have my kit but I think I will just watch today. Nice. Jane is there. Um, Vampire Ven Venom. Um, all the regulars. V. Hey. Hi everyone. Just watching today to make it a later date. Nice. Angela is there. Um, looking forward to two whole hours of fluffy indulgence. Catherine is there. Hi Catherine. Elaine. Hi. Carol is there, Carol from Ireland. Um, hi, Steffi, Alicia, and all of my fluffy, felty friends. It's a glorious day here in Ireland, but having spent four hours in the garden, it's now time for some relaxing felting. You are such a garden queen. Honestly, I cannot believe how much time you spend in your garden. I mean, it's brilliant. Saw some um, at a nature reserve just outside. Oh, we're talking about squirrels now. Okay, we'll come, come to that in a minute. Um, maybe I should say, if you want to keep this chat going, let's have a look what today's price is, because in our live streams, we always give away two £15 gift vouchers, and um, two of you will win one, obviously. Um, not together. I mean, one of you will each win a £15 gift voucher. It's never been that complicated, but um, have a tendency to make it complicated. So our giveaway today is um, the two pound two times £15 gift vouchers. And what we want you to tell us is, have you seen the elusive red squirrel? Tell us about your squirrel encounters, red or grey. If you haven't seen a red one, tell us about the grey ones. Um, well, the grey ones are in abundance. I know that. Um, definitely here where I live in the Forest of Dean, I see them every day several times over but sadly no red ones here for me comment um, by popping your comment into um, into the comments box if you're on YouTube you have to be signed in to um, your Google account to be able to comment and this video or this tutorial or this live stream whatever you want to call it will be repeated on the 9th of June 2020 at 7 p.m. over on our Facebook group The Makers with two S's and so if you um, if you want another chance to win a £15 gift voucher you can do this on Thursday at 7 p.m. 
So pop your comments into um, the stream of comments that will be coming up. Tell us your encounter with preferably a red, but if not with a gray squirrel. And um, so some people are already telling us that they, um, Carol is saying, we have a red squirrel regular visit the garden. He is rather ginger in color and loves apples. Oh, nice. Susan says, hi everyone. Hope you are all having a lovely day. So happy to be here with you today. Oh, hi Susan. I know you're in the US. So we've got Ireland, we've got US. Um, Ava, Ava, you are in, I want to say Norway, but it might be Sweden. Anyway, Scandinavia somewhere. Um, Heather is here, Lorna is here, Alison, hello, Donna is here, Donna um, is also from this Donna, we have several Donnas, this Donna is also from the US, um, oh Karen says my badger kid has just arrived, looking forward to the tutorial about making the paws, they look great, lovely, Bridget, Australia, right, we're getting to around the world now, Carolyn, uh, tell us where you're from if you are not a regular and I don't know who, where you're from. Jackie is here. Serena is here. I won't mention all the people in the UK. I ha have a rough idea where, where they're from, um, but not with all of you. So um, Lorna, I probably said that already. Rose, oh, Donna, all the way up in the top of Scotland. That That is worth mentioning. That's another. And Diana as well. Diana is from Scotland too. Um... Carol, another Carol. Um, oh, Sandra saw some great red squirrels about 20 years ago when I was on holiday on the Isle of Wight. Um, Gina is here. Um, we're all sharing squirrel stories here at the moment, so I might come back to that later and get cracking first of all. Um, the only red squirrels I have ever seen um, are in Germany, where they, I think they're native in Germany. We don't have gray squirrels. We've only got red squirrels, believe it or not, unless that has changed over the last 30 years. I don't believe it has. But if you do see squirrels, they're usually red ones. And um, they're tiny, tiny bit smaller than the gray ones um, in general. I think they're also less cheeky and um, forward because here in, in this country, red squirrels are very cheeky and they come really close. And um, yeah, and even if you if they can even become tame, I don't know that of red squirrels. But again, that, that might have changed. Right. Let's get started. I have so much to tell you. You wouldn't believe it. I have a list of things to say. We're seven years old. The makers are seven years old. In June 2015, the makers were established. Uh, let's start with our birthday news because um, that is, um, I've got a whole list of things, sorry. Birthday, here we go. It's our seventh birthday, the makers. And would you believe it that the seventh um anniversary is the woolen anniversary so you know how how you've got 10 i think is maybe wood um 25 is silver i know that um obviously 50 is gold and um and 70 we, we as you all know is platinum um but the seventh anniversary is wool and um, we'll only have this once so we must make the best of it and there's lots of things that will be happening um over the next few days i will tell you um in, in the course of these two hours, I will tell you what's happening. Anyway, let's have a look inside the squirrel kit because that's how we usually start um, the live streams. And you'll see this overhead because that's the other camera setting here. Right, and this is also how you will see me making most of the um, bits of the squirrel as well. So this um, is makes one squirrel. We used to have a kit that made two, but this only makes one. You get our step-by-step -step instructions in there with the tape measure on the left-hand side in centimeters for those who um, need help measuring centimeters. You get a box full of wool. You have here our basic core wool. This is the one that we use to build the bulk. This one is the Fox Ross Brown New Zealand Merino, which is uh, an amazing color. It works for so many animals, especially if they've got a bit of ginger in them. And that is for obviously the outer cover. We have got the wool to make the tail, which um, I will show you how to do. We also have got a, a different white, a smaller a quantity of white, and that is for the finishing touches on, on, the, on the outside of the squirrel, so not for the inside. And the same for this uh, brown. This is a, a Portuguese Merino. Uh, dark brown. You also get in the kit um, a felting mat, slightly bigger than some of the ones that we normally have in our kits. You get some extra strong thread, which you do need. I will show you that too. This is for the tail making. Of course, you get some uh, glue and eyes that puts the final sparkle into our squirrels. 
and brings makes them alive. You also get three medium felting needles in our kit and several lengths of um, wire. Now, in the future, some of this wire may be aluminium wire. I'm just giving you the heads up if you're watching this with uh, some uh, new kits that we are making up because we can't get the other um, wire anymore. Um, it's all got to do with Brexit. Don't get me started. Okay, so that's inside the kit. And um, some of this I'm going to keep out already. I'm actually going to use my own felting needles, leave these for another occasion. I will definitely keep the um, extra strong thread. I'm going to put the eyes away for the minute because that's something that um, I need the instructions. I will keep those. And um, what I need at first is that um, is that wool top, which is a Manx Lauten. Again, this is a natural colour, believe it or not. She really do walk around um, the fields with that with that beautiful sort of rust, rusty, um, caramel, gingery colour. And um, that is for the tail. So I need that at first because we're starting with the tail and I'm putting um, certainly the outer colours away, though I am keeping the basic core wool because that's something that will follow straight away once I've made the tail. tail. And um, the rest of it I'm just going to put down here. And I need the instructions, of course, as well. Right, um, so the squirrel itself is about um, 21 centimeters tall, so it is a life size. It has got a poseable tail, so there's a wire inside the tail. It's got poseable hands and legs, or arms and legs, I should say, and you could um, you could uh, get it to hold a little acorn or um, or maybe some another nut if you like. You can't find acorns at the moment, they're not quite ready. Um, maybe you've got some from last year. And um, and this is basically what we're going to do. Now I should also just say this is this squirrel was born because of Fiona Lan. Now Fiona Lan is a um is a lovely lady who's made it her purpose to uh, continue teaching children about British wildlife. And uh, she has written the book called Squirrel, and it looks like this. And this is also Fiona on here. Um, her business is called Land Learning, and she's, um, she's trying to educate children about nature and wildlife and conservation um, with, with sort of having ethical and moral principles. And so um, the books that she's written, there's more than one or they're in the making anyway, are quite educational and they'll give you uh, lovely stories, but at the same time, lots of useful information. So they are for children and adults alike, I would say. Um, and of her concern is that a lot of children, British children in particular, are becoming disconnected from the outdoors. And I can only second that 100%. Uh, living um, at the Wilderness Centre in the Forest of Dean, which is an outdoors education centre, I can always tell you when we get city kids here or when we get children from uh, uh, schools that are in the countryside, there is a difference between day and light, uh, day and night even. And... Uh, um, without wanting to go into too much detail, I really do think that a lot of our children don't get enough um, outdoors time and spending time in nature, um, just in the British British um, nature. So it's not even, you don't need to take them to Australia or unless you live in Australia, of course, or anywhere else. It's just even what happens in your own back garden if you've got, if you're lucky enough to have one. And um, that's also how I've always um, believed to bring my children up is, is to actually teach them about what's right in front of their noses first. It doesn't, we don't need to go and travel very far. Um, they were fascinated by centipedes and by um, wood, wood lice and by things that you could find in your own garden and uh, uh, observe and then maybe just venturing out into a forest or going to the seaside and uh, watching what's there looking for things that are hiding in the sea or under stones and um, it's all British wildlife so all of it is part of it maybe what hides in the river looking for crayfish lifting up a stone and uh, certainly um, yeah just 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 finding what, what's around and it doesn't need to be an animal in a zoo or anything like this. They're just as fascinated by the little things that you can find um, on your doorstep most of the time. Okay, um, this is where the um, lecturing stops and where we're starting to make a squirrel. So I'm going to the overhead 
um, view camera. We, we have a little look through the book later on, but um, this is basically what we need first. So you have got in your kit um, a longer length uh, and also thicker wire. Whether that is in the future, this will be replaced with an aluminium wire, so it will have the same thickness, it will just be shiny. And then you have in here two um, other lengths, and these will be the longer one will, for the, will be for the legs and the shorter one will be for the arms. I'm going to put this away for the time being. You will also need at this particular moment straight away a sewing needle. A sewing needle that has got a big enough eye to um, take the extra strong thread that comes in your kit. Now it is a long piece of thread and I would highly recommend to cut it in half. Having used the whole lot and being very annoyed because it gets knotted up, I would half it and then maybe if you need more just uh, take the other half to, um, to make it. So that's a tip I can give you already and um, I've, I'm using quite a long needle um, only so that you can see it better but you can use a shorter needle as long as the eye is big enough to take that extra strong thread and that is certainly what you need already. You also need a cardboard strip, only one of them. I've got two here but I thought I'd show you the difference. So this one is a corrugated cardboard, it's got the holes in it. If you've got one of these you might need to flatten it a bit, you know, sort of just squeeze the these um, air pockets flat. Um, it's easier to sew through it, which is exactly what we're going to do. But if you haven't got one, if you've just got a serial package will do, or uh, some of these um, envelopes that books get delivered in, or a certain large online shop delivers, uses these quite a lot. And what you need to do is first off, you need to taper one end just slightly down. So just cut sort of, there's no, it doesn't matter if this is um, very precise or not, but just taper it down so you've got your cardboard piece and that needs to be six centimeters in width and 12 centimeters in length. So that is the first thing that I am doing. I've got my, th my thread at the ready in a minute and I am also now starting from the beginning of the instructions. Now you've got that um, slightly thicker wire and you need to uh, bend in 20 centimeters from one end. To do this, just take your tape measure from the instructions, 20 centimeters are here, and bend that in. So I've now got the length of the wire here still with um, 20 centimeters bent in. And all you need to do now is you need to twist this part that you've bent all along the other wire that's running by its side. So um, you might be able, in, in fact, I'm pretty certain you will be able to do that with your fingers, but if you're struggling to do this, then use some pliers and um, and just twist the wire around itself. So you're, you're doubling up the wire in a way and you're strengthening it therefore. And this is going to be the wire that will be inside the tail. Now I've got a loop here, which I can't push flat with my fingers. So if you if you need to do that, then use um, some pliers. Maybe I, I almost want to put it in my mouth and use my teeth, but I won't do that because that, that's not recommended in any way or form. Um, so there's the twisted bit. So I'm just leaving that loop for now, see what happens. So I'm going to put this to one side now. And I'm... Um, now have this strand of lovely Mangslauten wool and I'm going to split the six into six strands now. So I'm teasing off length one, two, three, four, five, six. If you are um, nervous about doing this as I have done it then just split it in half and then split each half into half again and then um, how often do you have to do that oh you end up with eight I think if you do that way but you could split it in half and then split each half into three that might make it um, easier so I now have six strands here and I'm going to start using one one strand 
and all I'm going to do is now I begin to wrap the length of the wool fairly tightly around the card and I, um, I work my way up down the card which means that I'm going from the fatter part of the card towards the other end of the card. Now you don't have masses of wool to spare so you do need to make sure you cover the card rather than um, going over it loads and loads of times. If you've got wool left over then you can go over it but just make sure that you use the wool in the first instance to cover the card. So go along the card and get work your way towards the end like this. Um, this is the principle of a pom-pom and if you have made our little standing fox then you will have used that very same technique um, although the, it's slightly different. Um, it, the, the fox one is slightly improved from the squirrel because the fox happened afterwards but this works absolutely fine. So now that I've reached the end of my um, card. I'm, I've got some wool left over so I'm just going back over it again. Make sure you're wrapping it always in the same direction. It helps to keep the wool underneath um, tightly wrapped otherwise you you sort of almost aggravating it to become um, to unwrap it underneath and all of the wool can be used to make this tail. So now I've got um, a cardboard piece that it has been wrapped with the strands of wool and the next bit is the bit that's really boring and takes quite a little while. So I will do it and I will persevere, but it is, I'm just giving you the heads up. It is a bit boring. Okay, where did I put my needle there? Right, I've got my sewing needle now and I'm going to have to um, sew along the middle of this card with a really tight neat stitch to fasten the wool onto the card initially. But I'm also need to um, make this tail Bit, this wire bit that sits inside the tail, I also need to fasten that onto the onto the card and onto the wool because this is make makes the tail poseable. So to start with, I've got my my bit of um, extra strong string here, and I'm actually going to half this because I know what it was like using a huge long thing. These are my not very sharp scissors. These are the ones I usually cut wire with, hence they're not sharp anymore. And then I thread my needle and I'm using a single strand of this thread. Oh, it's already in knots. See? See what I mean? I'm terrible at this. Right, I've just got to unknot this for a minute. Here we go. Right. And um, I'm actually going to make sure that this sort of runs parallel. I'm not doubling it up. I'm just making my um, strand a bit shorter by having the second one uh, running by, by the side of it and um, you thread up your needle with the length of the thread start at the wider end of the card make tight little stitches through the card going around the first bit of wool so I'm, I'm, I'm just going in here um, you could put a knot on there by the way stop the thread from going through it doesn't say it in the instructions but you can definitely do that put a knot on there and now I'm going to make tight little stitches just to secure the end of my wool wrapped card. Here we go. Right, that's secured it here. And now I need to start um, by putting the tail wire on top of it. Now the tapered part of the card is the end of the tail and the bend of the wire is the end of the tail too. So you need to make sure that you're putting it the right way around. Fatter width of the card is where the wire stops being twisted and you've got the single wire coming along. So now what you need to do is you need to sew this piece of wire on whilst you're also attaching the wool to the card and I've established my thread so now I'm going in you're using a back stitch. Now, if you don't know what a back stitch is, um, it, I don't think it matters too much. The, the, the point is, even if you do know what a back stitch is, it won't look quite as traditional as a back stitch because you've got a wire there that you need to go round. So you're going always one side of the wire and then the other side of the wire because you're trapping the wire. So whilst you're going forward, you're then going back half a stitch to trap the wire. 
um, and you're making fairly tight stitches and the stitches need to be really close together so don't spread them too far widthwise have them nice and close together what you're doing here in effect is that you're um, whilst you're fastening the wool and the wire to the card you're also perforating the card so if you're finding this really tedious and you just want to get to the other end quickly you can do that because you can always go over it again as long as you keep the stitches nice and close together so i'm going um through one side coming through it so that it goes on one side of the wire and then i'm going out through the other side so it goes over the top of the wire and out on the other side trying to keep this wire in the center and tight little stitches so always pulling the stitches nice and tight and working your way to the other end this is the bit that's quite boring but what you could do is if this if this is boring you too much just go a bit faster with bigger stitches and then come back on yourself again um, to um, to have a second row you've got plenty of um, thread if you want to do this very neat and very slowly then take your time and have tiny little stitches that are sort of like maybe two to three millimeters apart mine are more like five millimeters apart at the moment because i'm i'm going at a at a, a fair speed here now this bit is now fastened onto can you see this bit is still loose so um that is what we're doing i'm i'm sewing the wool onto the card i'm also sewing the wire onto the card and whilst i'm going back in and out of my um card i'm perforating it and that is um that is the important part about this this particular technique it is in effect a pom-pom tail you're making um it's just not that you're doing a round pop a uh, pom-pom you're doing a um long pom-pom but you will see the familiarities you will see the similarities i should say it will become familiar to you in a minute when we have finished this particular process it does take a little time it's just to give you the heads up and um obviously i'm still working my way to the other end i've also got to got to sneeze yeah. <coughs> excuse me oh dear who's suffering from hay fever anybody I've, I've been really bad about three four weeks ago but I've, I've not i'm not so bad at the moment i will get bad again when all the grass is in full flower but um um living in the forest um is lovely but um i also have got an allergy against the beech and um oak tree pollen brilliant really completely the wrong trees to be living amongst because they're everywhere um though that that at the moment i don't have anymore because um, I think that was about three, four weeks ago. So now I'm waiting for the next bit, which is the grass. I hate the grass. Right. Um, let's keep going. Back. So I am doing a backstitch in a way because I'm always going um, sort of a, about, I'm going forward, but then I'm going half a stitch backward. And that is, in effect is a backstitch. So you're going a stitch forward and then half a stitch back um, so instead of just going forward which works a lot faster you're splitting that in half this speed because you're always having to go back on yourself again by at least half it's like going one step forward and, and half a step back seems to be a story of my life <laughs> oh dear right um, I hope you've all had a lovely Jubilee weekend, whatever you have done, um, if even if you didn't celebrate the Jubilee, at least you got two extra days if you live in the UK. Um, I don't know, maybe you, did you get this in Australia as well? Um, not sure if uh, any of the other countries got this too, where they, um, I suppose you have the Queen as your Queen, don't you? Yes, I must not say anything wrong because my political ignorance um okay so still working my way forward towards the end of the tail i'm i'm already planning to go through that loop in a minute as well i hope this is um not too tedious for any of you but if you're not even halfway down the tail then maybe now is the time to decide to um to watch or put me on pause and catch up 
with your work first. Um, I will uh, give you a bit of time to catch up as well, but I, I am planning to finish this in um, in the allotted time. So now I'm going through the middle. If you don't have that middle of the loop, then just keep going around it. And I'm also going now to catch that wool entirely. Yeah. So I've, I haven't even used half of that thread yet. Um, but I'm, I, what I've got left, I'm going to go and double back on myself a little more. Um, I've caught all the wool, so that's good. So now I'm just literally doing more stitching, not because I need to fasten it on more, but just to perforate that card a bit more. Um, going back. And still, I'm still going to either either side of the wire because I might as well make sure it's really, really super secure. Nearly there. I also stuck myself earlier with a sewing needle, drawing blood as well. So it's not just needle felting where you get that sharp stab. It does happen with sewing as well. So, okay, now I'm definitely getting bored. So I'm going to cut this now. It's fine. Just get, oh, let's just cut it. It'll be fine. So if you want to, you can go all the way back on itself, but I'm just cutting this now. Um, I am an impatient crafter. So now you've got this flat piece that has, is covered with wool. Um, looks pretty awful actually, but it will look much better in a minute because what you're going to do next is you're going to take your scissors, you might have to use the sharper ones, and you're going to cut along the sides. Oh my goodness, these are definitely wire damage. Um, cut along the sides to open your shape up and this is where probably the pom-pom technique if you're doing a round pom-pom will suddenly look very familiar so now you've got you've cut open one side and then you're going to cut open the other side remember the wool is fastened in the middle on um to it through the thread so even though it's been sewn onto the card it's also sewn onto itself in a way because you've um, made that stitch really nice and tight and worked in small increments and once you've cut both sides open, you're going to have to remove the card from the inside because we don't want the card anymore. And to do this, you're going to wriggle the card a bit because that will sort of help it to um, get separated in the middle. So where you've perforated it with the stitches, you're now um, giving it a bit of an extra help to get loosened. And then you start tearing it out. Don't be afraid about um, damaging it, you won't. I mean, you will damage the card, but not the tail. So make sure the wool is out of the place, tear the card out. It will come out willingly because you've perforated with the string. The string is so strong that it will not tear. It's super, super strong. And then you do this on one side and then you tear the other side out as well. If you have a tiny bit of card left in the middle, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it's not visible on the outside, nobody knows it's there. Oh, a bit of wool needs to be cut open here. Okay. And once you've done that, you have made a squirrel tail. So if nothing else, at least you've got a squirrel tail, um, which now to cover up the inside, which sort of could be slightly visible, you just need to fluff it up. There we go. So you've now got a tail, nice fluffy tail that you can pose and bend in whatever direction you want to. And let's have a look at the large camera. For those of you who need to catch up, this is what the tail looks like. A nice bushy squirrel tail ready to, um, we just need to make a squirrel now. But we've got the tail, so that's good. And um, I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat, so it gives you a ch chance to catch up. Um, by the way, give us the thumbs up if you're watching this live. Um, our tutorials that you are watching live here are free. Um, we just trust that you support us in other ways. So we're not, we don't take money off you to watch this. It is free. So if you're thinking of buying needle felting supplies or if you need a kit or a gift for anybody to do with needle felting, maybe the makers come 
um, first on your list, that would be lovely. And of course, there are also three needle felting books that are available to buy that um, all three of them I have authored. Uh, the first one I've co-authored and it's called Making Needle Felted Animals. The second one is called Making Simple Needle Felts and the third is um, Making fairy folk and they are all available on our website and if you buy from us you get signed copies so that's the only place where you can get your signed copy um so let's have a look what people are saying oh we've got a uh, cat there from pennsylvania she says good morning um catherine says she's not seen a red squirrel no matter how many times i've been to Brownsey Island. I do have two grey ones that live in one of the neighbor's trees and spend the day running up and down our fences. Um, I don't really know what why we're so against red squirrels. I think if it was the balance was tipped the other way, if there were less red, um, less um, grey squirrels and more red squirrels, then um, we would probably all want to see grey squirrels because that seems to be human nature that we only like the things that are very few of. I remember the year. Um, there were years and years where everybody thought that sparrows were a total pest and sparrows were everywhere and these flipping sparrows, they're there and, you know, I want the nice, nice colourful birds in my bird food. I don't want any sparrows. And then there was a year where, where the, all the sparrows had gone. Nobody knew where they had gone or maybe we all knew where they had gone. And um, and then everybody was like, oh, I've seen a sparrow. It's so amazing. <laughs> Just a couple of years before we all wanted them gone from our gardens. Oh, we're such funny creatures as humans. Uh, there's so many stories that you're telling. Poor Alicia, she'll have such a job to uh, pick a winner. And of course, that will be the same on um, Thursday on Facebook. Right. Um, I want to crack on because there is a, we have a lot to do. We have only done the squirrel's uh, tale so far. But I do want to tell you about our birthday week, what's coming up, because it is very exciting. So first of all, today, what ha happens today is um, we are going to, you have to watch out on our social media channels. So today um, we are going to release um, the Great Makers Felt Off, which starts Tuesday, which is today. Um, and what we want to, you to do is we want you to felt a birthday treat um, that could be cake or any kind of food that pops into your mind, um, head. And um, this will be made public on the Makers Facebook page where you can also submit your photo. And we'll, we'll run this for seven days. So you have time to felt your cake and eat it, no, and post it. And um, I have an idea for you for that already because you might have um, seen our donut um, pack that makes these three yummy donuts. So if you're completely stuck for ideas, the donuts will count as well towards your um, entry. Uh, the donut kit is actually really amazing. It's massive. I, I didn't quite appreciate how big it was until I saw it for real. And what you get in your donut um, pack, there's no tools in there. Let's start with what's not in it. Uh, but what you do get in there, sorry, I had to tape it up because it just pops open otherwise, is obviously the instructions. There's also a free set of uh, donut instructions on our newsletter this month. You get three key rings, which you could choose to turn your donuts into key, ring, um, key rings, which I think is such a lovely idea. And they're really solidly felted. So, And then you've got three lots of making a donut. But you can also mix and match it. So you don't have to stick to these uh, particular colors that we have uh, designed. You can make up different colorways and mix the wool differently. It tells you all in the instructions how to do it. And um, and there you go. You've got There's plenty of wool in there. There's actually quite a lot of wool in there it's a large a4 box and that makes all of those three very yummy yummy donuts they are particularly suitable for uh, for those of you who are on a diet they're high in fiber fat free no calories and in fact in the making you will burn calories i mean that is just like ideal donuts right um, so yes, um, if you want to participate and you stack for ideas, get our donut um, needle felting pack. Order it as soon as you can so it gets to you in time. Maybe you've already got it. So just get cracking, make a donut. Doesn't take very long to make a donut or um, just have a look on our website. We have got a free tutorial for a donut um, 
uh, for making a needle felted donut and you might have the stash at home to just make your own version up and post it on our uh, makers uh, page um, which um, the post will come will be made available tonight at six o'clock this is British summer time so don't go on there now do it once the post is up and then put your comment um, put in the comments put the photo and then we will draw a lucky winner in seven days time for a surprise gift okay that's one of the things that we're doing this year in celebration of our birthday. We want birthday cake, of course, and we want the felted type. So the Great Makers Felt Off is happening at six tonight. And I also just thought I'd give you a little, um, the, 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 the squirrel book itself um, is, it has got lovely illustrations in it. If you think that is a good gift idea for anybody, then you're supporting a good cause. And um, what I don't know at the moment is if I show you this little video of um, Alice flicking through the book, I don't know if I'm going to be muted. So I, I will try and talk over it, but it might not happen. So I, um, if you can't hear me at all, don't panic. It's only a few seconds long. Okay, here we go. Right. Oh, I think I might be able to talk. There we go. That's the book by Fiona um, Lan. It uh, tells you all about the squirrels and um, and um, the pine martens. That's the other animal in there. And it tells the story of two squirrels, the two main characters in there. It's very, very sweet and definitely worth um, having a look at. Hopefully you heard me there um, and I wasn't hadn't muted myself away. Right, um, so what else are we doing? So you've seen, I've shown you the book. Um, maybe I should tell you just while I'm in the mood what the next live stream is. Um, so next week on the 14th of June, we're going to do the Ladybird Fairy, which is our um, fairy box for June. I think it's got, it's going to be a really lovely make. I'm looking forward to teaching you how to do this. The Strawberry Girl is coming up in... Um, on the 21st of June because um, she's lovely and she's in the making simple needle felt books so books so if you want to make along and you've got the book you can do that certainly um, it is a stash buster so we don't have a kit or pack for this hopefully you've got your own supplies and then um, the uh, long awaited gardening mouse tutorial is happening on the 28th of June um, and um, I've seen lots and lots of um, amazing mice already being born. You've all done a brilliant job with the Jubilee mouse. Some of you have made the party mouse. Well, the gardening mouse is next and there will be another couple of special edition mice um, coming up um, very shortly um, over the next few months. I've definitely got a, a skiing mouse already. Um, it's, it's already designed and that's happening in, in the autumn, but there might be another mouse before that. So I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut for the time being not because I don't want to tell you it's just that um, if I tell you I've got to do it otherwise I have a I might have a back door out of all of this because I am so busy I can't even begin to tell you how much thing how many things I've got to do right let's continue with um, our squirrel so we've done all of these bits here now now we're going to grab the um, other wire lengths so as I said before you've got a shorter one and a longer one we're starting with a shorter one that means we're starting with the arms or the front paws um, legs whatever you want to call it and um, you're basically going to fold this wire in half so you find the middle part here and then you're going to fold the um, two ends also in half so you you're almost you're making the letter w basically make the letter w like that here we go so it's it's folded in half and then the two bits are folded in half again and um now i need the um fox rust brown main wool which there's quite a lot and um, I need strips of it so to tear off the strips because it's a wool bat it has got fairly short fibers you, but you will you can tell what, what the grain of the wool is um, so you can just strip take a strip off along the grain of the wool um, which helps if you if you want a strand rather than just a, a, a pinch or wisp and you're now going to cover this little bend here both ends of the of the W that are sitting on the on like literally sitting on the floor, if you like. So you're going to cover one first, and that will be, become the paw end. Cover it by about three centimeters. 
I'm conscious that I'm unbending the rest of it. So if you're worried about you losing the bend, then mark it with a pen or, or really give it a good old pinch so that you've got that really sharp um, bend there that doesn't sort of get, just get lost. Um, in fact, you only need the, the two bits on the bottom. And where you've covered the bend, you're going to pinch that shut and now you're going to twist the remaining end of the wire around the one that runs parallel to it. So you just, I've got my let my end bit here covered. I'm just ignoring that for the time being. And I'm just twisting the other bits around it towards the middle here. And then I'm going to continue wrapping the wool flat like a ribbon, nice and tight onto the wire along that twisted part of the wire all the way in a, into the center. And this is obviously becoming the arm, so you need to make that a little bit fatter, otherwise the squirrel will have very skinny arms, which we don't want, like this. And then here on the other side as well. So cover this up. That's the paw. Make it nice and neat. It's a really good idea to continue wrapping um, the wire with the wool always in the same di direction. So use the wool, start over, remember what, the, uh, what your starting point was. I, I always tend to wrap with my left hand, even though I am right-handed and I need a little bit more wool, so. And more here and then make it slightly fatter towards the top of the arm. And um, you can needle felt this if it if it looks a little bit like disheveled or you um, you need to tuck in some loose fibers. You can needle felt this down now. And the way to do this is by I'm using the same kind of um, mat that's in the kit, but it's not the exact very one. Um, you have medium needles, so I'm using a medium needle too. And all you need to do is just stab into this um, little covered arm at a shallow angle so that you're just tucking in the fibers rather than stabbing them all the way through to uh, the other side. Just go at a shallow angle and tuck them away and neaten it up a bit. Uh, we will be doing more work on this, obviously. Um, so it just needs to be stabbed so that it doesn't come off, basically. Unless you've wrapped it really tight and neat and stays on there anyway, then you don't even need to felt it. And once you've done this, then you're going to do the same on the other side. So where that bend is, that is where you're going to add the wool. So have your strand of wool ready. Cover the bend about three centimeters, nice and tight. Make sure you always go flat like a ribbon, so go round it and flat over it rather than twisting the wool. Once you've got the bend covered, close it up, twist the wire along the remaining one. And I've got my bit of wool flapping around here. And once you've done that, then you're going to um, repeat exactly the same what you've done on the other paw by building up the layers and going along that front leg all the way into the middle where you will meet the other end of the leg. So you don't need to go over that leg, um, the other leg, because that's going on the, on the opposite direction, the wool. So I'm just going as far up to it as I can and then go over it again to make that second arm match this, the first one I've made in size. There we go. And that basically is the uh, the set of arms done. And um, if you um, need to know, we're making the legs in exactly the same way, but obviously they are slightly longer. So therefore the, um, the wire being longer, but it's the same, exactly the same technique as I'm making the arms here. We're going to make the legs. And you can needle felt this part here down as well. Just stabbing um, along the wire rather than straight into it. It's not just that um, it, it makes it look neater. It also stops breaking your needle because if you're going straight in, the chances are you hit the wire. 
and um, that could be a bit lethal for your needle. There we go. Right, so now you've got a set of arms here. I'm going to put this to one side. I'm mostly interested that these ends are neat. This part here will pretty much disappear inside the squirrel, so it's not so essential. Right, I'm going to show you this whole thing again with uh, the second length of wire, which is slightly longer. So I'm going to make a proper bend in here so that I know that's my middle point. This is going to be at the top of the W, and then I'm bending the other halves in so that they become the bits at the bottom of the W. The wire is sort of wanting to go into all directions, but you can just force it to go the way you want it to go. So you now you've got a second W here. It's a, it's a very creative W, this one. There it is. And these bits here down here that I'm pointing out with my thumbs, these are going to be the covered um, bends that will become the, the feet, the paws at the, at the, at the legs. And for this, you need your same wool again. Cover this also for three centimeters. Bend the other bits out of the way because if, as long as you've marked that part, you know exactly where to put the wool. Once you've covered that part, you will pinch that shut, same way as you did with the arms or the front legs. And then you twist that wire shut. So the wool is now trapped, you've got the end covered in wool, and you're just making that um, double up that wire along the leg. And then you use the wool and cover up the rest of the leg. I work really close to the wire and every time I go around it, I give it a real good tight pull so that the wool doesn't, um, doesn't get tempted to be floppy. I don't know if you can see how, how tightly I'm twisting that and work to the very, very last wispy bits because they are the ones that hold everything in place so that it doesn't come undone. So it's quite a tight wrap there. Need more of the wool, take the strands off rather than wisps and then um, work a little bit more by adding more layers over the top. Um, whilst I'm doing this, I'm just going to um, tell you that um, it just just can't stop thinking about our little cat, Dolly. She's, um, I can never remember how old she is, I think she's 15 or 16, and um, she's not very well at the moment. She's basically, she's dying. But there is always that point, at which point do you, uh, she's, she's really happy in herself, even though she has one leg that she isn't using at all. There's something wrong with it, but we don't know what it is. And because she's so old, we're not about to have it x-rayed and put in plaster or anything like this. That would just be torture for her. So we don't actually know what's wrong with it. We just know that she's not using it. So she's a three-legged cat at the moment. And then um, because she's so immobile, she hasn't been able to sharpen her claws. So I think she accidentally pulled the claw out um, by trying to get out of her bed. We've now clipped her her um, claws. But um, she that got infected. So she was on only three legs. No, two legs. She had... She had only three legs, but well, she's still, still got all the legs, but she's not using them. Um, and um, so then she was basically on two legs, the poor thing. And every time you pay her attention, she purrs like she's the happiest cat on the planet. She's, um, she's super hungry. She eats. She makes herself somehow down, all the way down a really steep staircase. Um, if I see her going down the stairs, I'll obviously carry her out. But she just makes herself... She's totally toilet trained still she goes outside um and she lies in the sun and she's such a happy little soul um and we just it breaks our hearts because this poor thing she's like she's not even limping she's just like sort of skivvying along the wall because that gives her part of the support they're such so versatile cats no no complaining nothing at all ah i haven't twisted it i'm chatting nearly forgot to twist it okay i'm twisting it now and um so we don't really know what to do with her. We had her by um, with the vet and we're going back every two weeks to assess the situation. But we take her to the vet and she sits on the on the on the treatment table and she's just spurring her little soul out, like so happy that somebody pays her attention that um we just take her back home again and think, oh, we'll just give her a bit longer. She's obviously still um still happy to be alive and uh, you know, even though it looks absolutely terrible. 
Um, anyway, she's got antibiotics now, so hopefully that infection will go, And but we don't know what's up with her leg. I don't think we can do anything about that. So anyway, cut a long story short, it is really hard. I've seen a couple of uh, people on social media sharing that some of their pets have died, and it's just such a sad time when you know they're getting old, and it's we're talking about days, sometimes only weeks rather than months and years. And um and, and it's just knowing when when's enough? When is it enough? When or do you just let them do their own thing? I don't know. I, I would hate to see an animal suffer. Um so yes, anyway, that was that was a cheerful story. You're probably all <laughs> <laughs> really really cheered up by that uh, little interlude sorry about this guys um i'll try and think of something funnier um okay not coming at the moment but it will come it will come um right last i'm on my last leg here yeah, so is the cat oh dear um yes um getting to is that even the leg oh yes that is the leg i was working on um, so I'm not too worried that it looks a bit untidy in the middle because that will just completely disappear um, once I fasten all of this onto the uh, squirrel. I'm going to fasten the leg down a little bit and now I need to do the next step which is attaching the legs to the body um, but I will do that. Have I gone in the right order? I have a tendency to make up my own stuff here. No, we're, no, we're doing legs. Yeah, we're doing legs, but, but before we attach the legs, we're going to have to do something with the head first. So I'm going to put this set of legs to one side and work on it in a minute. Just felt that down so it's not flopping around. I could go around the middle a bit more, but I know it's just gonna get completely covered, so I'm just not I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Right, arms and legs ready for later. Put these to one side. Now the next thing I need to do is using this um larger quantity of basic core wool, which is it comes from Welsh sheep actually. It's it's it smells quite sheepy. Hopefully you don't mind the sheepy smell. I love sheepy smell, not everybody does, but if you don't tough luck. Um, I need to tear off enough to make about um, to make a head shape of about two and a half centimeters in diameter. It's actually not very big, two and a half centimeters in diameter. And to do this, I'm winding the wool in on itself. So the tighter you wind it, the less you got to felt it. And I'm just going to give that a stub and measure it then so that it doesn't pop open. So that's my little ball here now. And let's have a look. So this is at the moment, it's um, it's just over, it's three and a half centimeters. So it's actually bigger than I want it to be. Is that right? Yes, three and a half centimeters or three centimeters. So I'm gonna give that a bit of a stab to make it smaller. If yours is a little bit bigger, say by half a centimeter, it's not the end of the world because there's a lot of um, adjustment that you can do with needle felting. Um, I should have said, if you've never needle felt it before, maybe I should explain to you that the needle itself is um, the essential part for needle felting. Without it, you can't do it. It has got little notches at the end of the needle. So this sort of rasping noise that you can hear now, that that is these little notches that are catching the uh, wool fibers and pushing them um, and tangling them up around each other. It's a very satisfying noise. Um, it's probably one of the most um lovely noises i know i love i love that feeling of and that feeling and that noise of crunch 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 um and as you stab into the wool you first of all you have to mind your fingers if you stab yourself it hurts um, but secondly, you have to go in and out in a straight line. So don't put any pressure on that needle. It doesn't really, really doesn't like it. But also what you will find is as you're felting the shape down, it will shrink in size. So this has now shrunk quite a bit to, yay, two and a half centimeters. Perfect. So this part here is now going to be attached. It's got, it's only the small a small head at the moment, but it will grow um, later. But first of all, we need to bend that main wire that comes out of the tail back on itself so that you've got now a doubled up body wire here. 
with um, a, a loop at the top. And it's that loop that we insert our little ball that you've made. And you're going to twist that shut underneath the ball for about two centimeters. So the twist here, that's about two centimeters. Um, yep, yeah, that's about two centimeters. So squirrel, head, tail, body, okay? That's where you're heading. And now you need the set of arms, which is the shorter set of limbs that you've made. And that gets inserted right under the twist of the wire there. Make sure that you've got it in the center so that the arms are the same length. Right under that twist. And then you trap it by twisting underneath that set of arms again. And this time you're going round for about five centimeters. So if you've got tape measure, use that. Otherwise, use the instructions. So 025, that's still a bit to go. Um, a bit more there. Once you've got that, then you're going to take the set of legs, insert these, make sure they're in the center. So I fold them in half put them right into that um, bent wire, and then you continue bending the wire underneath it. So have I done this right? Let's just check. Place the arms in there. It's the measurements that are the important bit. Um, twist the wires together tightly after the arms to hold them in place, then continue twisting to about five centimeters from the, oh, five centimeters from the tail. Okay, right. So that was too far up the body. So the, the bit between the arms and the, and the legs is not five centimeters. It's really five centimeters from the tail. So I keep twisting until that part here from here to there is five centimeters rather than the um, bit between the arms and legs and that is now about five centimeters so now I put the legs in I did that wrong earlier on my other squirrel but that's fine looks fine and now I twist that to go all the way down to the tail so now you have got tail legs very jingly jangly um, but sometimes it helps to push, push the, um, push everything into place, the, the, um, limbs into the right position, because that sort of gives you the idea of where you're going with this. So this is where the squirrel shape is heading now. And what I will show you overhead and I will take a little break is I will just show you how to secure these uh, limbs a little bit further by teasing off a strand of the uh, main wool, the main white wool, and wrapping it around the join that you've just created here. So go round it um, from in all directions, so crisscross it. Gets caught on the wire there. Crisscross it and secure the uh, legs further to um, the wire that you've twisted. And just keep going around it, make it nice and tight. As long as you always go um, in, in all directions, it will be an even, an even um, secure fit here. And once you've done that with the legs, you do that with the arms as well. Maybe you've done it the other way around. Whichever way around is fine. So add more wool to here. Going around the whole body, crisscrossing it as you go along. And that will further secure it will it will stop them from jiggling and jangling around so much. So they're now a lot more secure here against the body wire. And that's how far we have got with the squirrel so far. OK, let's take a little break. I'll just show you it. Um, there you go. You can sort of your imagination can now begin to see the squirrel happening, I guess, um, especially if you give it the right sort of bending bend it the right way, have the, the legs tucked in a bit more like they do, there we go, and the arms push back, to push back a bit and 
with a front like that. So um, you can see the proportions of the squirrel happening via armature in that way is really great because um, you can't really do much in terms of um, changing the size. Um, so you can't get carried away to suddenly make it really big or really small because you're restricted by the wire in, in a good way. So that, that is uh, why a lot of people love wire armature because it, it really, really holds you to the proportions um, as long as you get the proportions right with the wire in the first place, obviously. Right, so let's have a look um, what else is happening here in the chat. Um, I try, I, I, I never go in order because, and I never catch all of you because I don't look at it often enough. So I do apologize. Oh, Trisha is there. Hello. Uh, better late than never. Absolutely. Karen is there. So you don't put the stitches through the wire then? No. On this occasion, this is, this is, it's very similar to the fox tail, but the fox tail was a design after the squirrel. And I actually think it is easier to put the stitches through the wire and twist the wire as you're sewing along. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. But with this particular, particular make you actually going round the twisted wire um, and um, and securing in that way. As with many, um, many, many um, things in needle felting, there are many ways of getting to the same result. So this is just how this has been designed. Um, but if you want to do it like the fox, if you know what I'm talking about, then do it that way, uh, Karen, that's absolutely fine. Um, Oh, Rose says, pollen is so bad here in Massachusetts. I wonder what pollen it is that gets to you. Serena says, my, my hay fever is terrible right now. I know. It, yeah, some people say really awful. It depends on the type of pollen, what you're allergic to. Catherine says, hay fever, hay fever is bad at the moment. Everybody's got hay fever. Oh, no, I hope it's not too bad in our spring here. Bridget, of course, you were in midwinter. Vampire venom, it's very wet here, so pollen count isn't too bad. Well... I'm not sure about this. You see, I get worse hay fever when it starts raining. And my theory is that the rain pushes all the pollen down and then it just gets all ended up in my nose. Um, but uh, Vampire Women says, plus, plus I'm recovering from COVID, so not really noticing the normal symptoms too much, despite forgetting my antihistamines. Susan says, any enjoyed watching the Jubilee and all of the wonderful celebrations. Well, my favorite, and I will be honest, I didn't watch very much of it, but what I did watch over and over, because that's what I do when I like something, I have to watch it over and over until um, it stops giving me pleasure. And that was um, definitely Paddington um, and his uh, marmalade sandwich and the queen having hers in her handbag. I thought that was, it's just lovely. I want to watch that all the time because um, I love Paddington. Um, of course, it's not just about Paddington, but it's just a lovely touch and, you know, how she's gone along with it is, I think, speaks volumes for her. Um, Trisha says her battery is going, oh no, plug, plug it in, plug it in, where do you live? You, you've got, you got sockets and electricity, surely. Um, Jackie says, drat lunchtime is over, back to work. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jackie. Um, where are her awesome rainbow scissors? Well, my awesome rainbow scissors are here, there. I'm saving them for special occasions. Um, so yes, I love my rainbow scissors. Um, um, Ashley says, feather duster. Oh yes, a feather duster. The tail looks like a feather duster. I know what you're talking about. Donna says, the tail is the cutest part of um, a squirrel. Great way to make a cute tail. Teresa says, ah, I've only just got here. What have I missed? Not much because you can rewind it. It's all good. Don't worry, Teresa. Elaine says, love that tail making method. So fluffy. Um, Carolyn says, great way to make a tail. So fluffy. Rose says, I always say it is worth the shipping to the USA because of all you give back to us. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Thank you very much. Um, Karen says, um, we had a school crossing advert which was Tufty the Red Squirrel, which sort of helped us to love squirrels, showing my age probably. Oh, yeah, well, to be honest, everybody loves squirrels and most people don't like rats, but they're not actually that far from, um, it's just a fluffy tail, isn't it? If, 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 if a squirrel had a rat tail, you wouldn't um, love it so much, would you now? Or if a rat had a fluffy tail, you would probably love it. Think about it. Um, uh, yes, felt your cake and eat it. That's it. Um, oh, Teresa says, I'm making a grey squirrel as I've been taking a client for walks in a local park and wasn't squirrel climbs my leg for walnuts out of, out of my pocket. Wow. 
that's nice. Karen says, Don donut pack looks great. Thank you. Uh, yummy donuts. Yes, yummy, yummy, yummy. Vampire Vernon says, after making a few more fairies of color, I'm hoping to make some donut key rings and Ukraine butterfly brooches for a market on the 18th. Oh, was it you um, who made lots of uh, UK, um, not UK, Ukrainian um, sunflower fields already? We still obviously got these for sale. At some point, we have to do a totting up and um, and let you know how, how much money we've raised for charity. We will do that. It's on our list of things to do. It's just we've been rather busy with everything else that's going on. Uh, we've, by the way, today got the go ahead with our design work with Artman. So watch out for this Robin Robin kit. It is coming. I'm not just saying it is really it is really real. Um, I have seen a wild pine martin. Absolutely amazing since it is so shy normally. Would love to do a pine martin craft. Mm, I know. I do like all these animals. Pine martins and ferrets and um, weasels and all of them. So you never know. I don't think I share that love with many people, but still. Um, love the mice, says Gina. Mice of one make I've never got the hang of. Oh, Serena, we need to teach you. You have to tune in on the, when is it now? The 28th of June, make a mouse with me. Um, I should also just say, I'm going to say it really quietly. On Friday, um, which is the 10th of June, I will be on the new Create and Craft. I say the new Create and Craft, that's what I call it. Because, um, of course, we were on Craft TV, Create and Craft, and then it was bought by Hochanda, and now it's still called Create and Craft hugely confusing anyway we will be on creating craft there's only one now um on the 10th of june at 12 o'clock and i will be bringing the gardening mass and i might do a little a little quick um tutorial even though we're going to do it properly on the live stream so you can maybe watch it twice julie says hi julie um we have red squirrels in our garden you're up in scotland aren't you julie if i remember rightly or maybe not they feed from the bird feeders one feeder is at the kitchen window, the squirrel will ignore us and continue to feed. Beautiful to watch, cheeky little monkey. Oh, Van der Meer says, hi late again. I love red squirrels. My mother had one in her garden last week. See, I think it's a continental thing, red squirrels. Um, Marion says, hi, I'm only with you for a few minutes in Bristol at Baltic Wharf Caravan site. Oh, I didn't realize you, you've been in our, you're in our neck of the woods. Um, in Pie Minster at the moment, they serve delicious gluten-free pies. Never seen a red squirrel, but three greys living in the garden. Um, Gina says, you could run some PVA around the edges. This is where I have to think, around the edges. No idea what edges, but I'm sure it all made sense at the time. Uh, Karen says, we had a grey squirrel that tried to jump from my daughter's trampoline onto the feeder. It didn't allow for the snow, slipped and hit the pole instead. Ouch! Thought it was bouncing. Um, oh, bless Mary, and she's watching again on Thursday. Teresa says, can I watch this from the start when it's finished? I missed the tail. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes, you can. Um, destined to not watch this now got to fetch some from work that's okay it, it will be there Teresa don't worry he won't miss out Diana says poor oh my poor pussycat um she will tell you when she has had enough in the meantime just enjoy her last fairy fairy purring weeks and furry weeks uh, Bridget says that's hard Steffi it depends on what you believe offer pain relief and she'll go when it's her time I know mm, it's so hard isn't it mm. Those not just hurt when they go into a finger, hit my finger a couple of times this week and whilst watching, uh, catching up on some projects, this is needle felting, stubbing yourself. Um, more like a monkey at the moment, haha, -ha, absolutely, it is a bit, doesn't it, it looks a bit weird. Um, anyway, I better crack on, if it wasn't for the tail, it could be a, a little monkey, yeah, it could be, so maybe you want to convert it into a monkey if it doesn't turn, look, turn out to be a red squirrel. Melanie says, red squirrels are traditionally British. Oh. I didn't know that. The grey squirrels were imported. They are more aggressive than the red squirrels. That's why there was a decline of the red ones. I know that they were originally in this country. I do know that and that the grey squirrels pushed the red squirrels out. But I didn't know that the red squirrels were traditionally British. So what, they came from Britain to the continent? Or somebody, please dissolve, um, resolve, no, um, solve this mystery. No, no uh, prefix needed. Um, okay. Um, 
Uh, Paddington was great, says Carol. Yay. Yes, I made six for the market and have four more rings. Ah, this, we're talking donuts again, not Paddingtons. And uh, Melanie says, red squirrels are, no, I've not been there. How have I missed that before? Um, oh, there's a European red squirrel. Now we're getting to the details. We need a squirrel expert to solve all the mysteries. So maybe there is a British red squirrel and maybe there's a European red squirrel. However, um, let's um, let's just tell you some something that probably none of you in the UK know. You are part of Europe. Yes. So when you talk about European, it does include British. Um, sorry, that was a bit mean to say that that way, but it amuses me endlessly. It, in fact, it annoys me a lot of the time when people talk about, um, no, that's British and that's Euro European. It's like, ah, uh, so anything British is also European, but not everything European is British necessarily or the other way around, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but yes, you are still part of Europe. Right, let's continue with um, the squirrel. Um, and we need our bulk of the white wool to build up the body and um, this is I'm going to do this sort of quite speedily now this this is not meant to be done in a very tight fashion so you're going to wrap the wool and you wrap the body now because you're building up the bulk quite softly with that um, basic core wool which could it sticks sort of quite well to itself so you're not doing this uh, very tightly but um, you're doing it just to build bulk and you also don't need to needle felt that down at the moment. Um, the main thing is that you are building up the bulk and um, you're building up wool around the hips. I'm going around the shoulders at the moment. I know that's a bit contrary to what I'm saying. Um, so that's the upper body. It will look quite weird. Needle felted items, when they when they go through these transitions, they always look really strange. So don't don't be alarmed by all of this. And you will cover some of the the red legs that you've so painfully and painstakingly, not painfully, but painstakingly um covered in in the fox um rust brown because you need to build up the thighs. So that, that give give it sort of some puffy trouser legs here. And do the same on the other side. So I'm I'm working a little bit faster than I have before. Um, however, what I do want to show you, and then I might switch over to the one I made earlier. So once you start adding bulk to it, you can see that it it, be it begins to look more like the squirrel. What looks completely wrong at the moment is the head. So we are going to build a little bit more bulk on the head by wrapping more wool around that as well, because it needs to be brought in line with the rest of it. So this wool is quite um, lofty. With lofty, what I mean is it's very soft and springy, so you can build bulk quite quickly. Um, admittedly, it is soft, so it's not a, a solidly felted or solidly, um, it, it feel, continues feeling lofty and soft, and that's exactly where we want to be. So now it's got a bigger head, but what's m missing is the snout. And for this, you're going to make a little ball shape, similar to how you made the head, but even smaller. And you don't even need to pre-felt it. You can just attach it straight away to the front of the squirrel. It's my felting needle, like that. So felt that down, oh dear, like this. So you're making that extension of the head, basically, the snout, the front of the, the nose, all of, all of that. Um, so imagine it doesn't obviously will stay looking like this because what you have to do is you have to add wool to integrate that shape. It doesn't say that specifically in the instructions. But as soon as you add the wool over the top, it evens out the shape of the head. So snap that down. Remember, we're going to have to dress the whole squirrel in the fox rust brown. So you even even you can make it all neat and everything, but you don't have to because you're going to add everything over the top again. So if you're adding the the wool over the top at the same time, that will um, felt down what's underneath as well. So the, the head of the squirrel is becoming more distinct. But what I want to do is, I've still got quite a bit of wool left here. I have actually 
made one earlier and it looks a, a little bit neater already so I'm gonna, just going to switch this um, quite quickly because I'm ready now with this squirrel I'm ready to dress him and um, and I, I do want to stick to my two hours so I have got um, oh I've still got a bit of time but we've got quite a lot of details still to do so imagine I've used up all the wool and I've made him um, all nice and bulky and I've actually felted this down and this is what he looks like now um, so he's got pretty much the right shape but now he has the wrong color and that's what we need to change right I am now on the last page of the instructions there's a lot um, of details that um, are in the, on that last page and I'm going to use my brown fox rust brown wool I'm going to start dressing him you might have to bend the tail out of the way so you gonna apply the wool exactly in the direction as you imagine the fur goes so I'm I'm stroking the wool I say I'm stroking it it's almost like you're painting the wool on um, so it runs from the top down to the tail and you're felting that on you're always using your medium needles in the kit you don't need to use any others and this is where the detail starts so this is why I wanted to give this a little bit more time because building the bulk is is something that you can do quite quickly um, but this is where it needs to take a little bit longer because you want to get this right so at dress your squirrel um, begin to cover the squirrel's body um, arms and legs with thin layers of the main color leaving the stomach chest uncovered um, now if you have got a three needle felting tool you can speed the process up now if you don't know what a three needle felting tool is it could look like this or it could look like that they have lids um, as well this um, you can use um, three needles two needles or just one needle in them um, if you're using it to speed up your work obviously you will want three needles and that will now help you to uh, firm up the whole shape, but it will also help you to speed up covering the squirrel as well. If you don't have it, just stick to your single medium felting needle and begin colouring in the whole body. So always going in that direction of how you imagine the fur naturally goes. And color that in. Um, I want to tell you some other things. So we've got our great makers felt off happening um, tonight and then tomorrow you've got to watch out for another um, for for another uh, release on social media. The, tomorrow will be on Instagram and on Facebook and uh, tomorrow is the um, 8th of uh, June so when you're watching this on Thursday it will be in full swing and um, for this you will um, what are you going to um, do for that um, yes we have got um, we want you to share the needle felting love and you can win yourself um, a chicken and or a hen and chick kit I should say and we give seven away uh, seven lucky winners and you need to um, to watch out for the social media post to come out on uh, Wednesday the 8th in the evening all the, all the bits will be released in the evening and um, it, it basically we want you to share the needle felting love and we'll ask you another question which you need to just watch out for um, on, on um, Facebook and on Instagram and then finally and this is this is the big thing that is happening on Thursday um, and if you're watching this on Thursday it will already be live from 5 p.m. on Thursday, which is the 9th of June, until 1 a.m. British Summer Times, exactly seven hours long, we are we've got a code which will be active, and it's called We Are Seven. So all capital letters, we as in you, me, and we are because we are seven. A R E seven, all in one word. We are seven. Use this code only between 5 p.m. and 1 a.m. British Summer Time on the 9th of June. We've tried to do it so that it works all around the world so it might be late in the evening for us it might be um, early in the morning for some of you and it might be um, um, other time afternoon or whatever um, for others um, again so use this code only for the seven hours it is valid on Thursday the 9th of June and it gives you 50% off everything with the exception of subscription boxes advent advent wreath advent calendar 
gift vouchers and other sale items. But um, basically, that that's sort of, I would say, 95% of everything we've got on our website. With that code, we are seven. Don't use it now. Won't work now. Use it on the 9th of June from 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. British summertime for 50% off. And that's our special birthday treat from us to you, celebrating our seventh wool anniversary. So there we go. Um, and whilst um, I'm chatting away, I'm also stabbing away here on the squirrel, colouring it in. Um, you need to bear in mind that you need to keep it in that um, in that position where it, it sort of crouches. So make sure you have that position um, right when you add the wool over the top because um, as as you add the wool, it won't you you basically it won't be poseable anymore. You it won't be stretching its legs out. So you need to add the wool onto it as it's in that posing position. And I'm just going to do this on the overview scene so you can see it as I'm doing it. And so make sure you follow that line of the haunch here. He hasn't this one hasn't got great great big size needs to eat a lot more nuts and felt it down you should have enough of that um, um, fox rust colored wool remember we're not coloring the tummy because the tummy is actually going to stay white all, all, uh, albeit we will be coloring it in on in the other white so make sure the legs are in the right position when you cover the wool over it so that you can follow that line of um, the hip and the knee and the thigh here and yeah that's it um, what else can I tell you I, I want to show you if if anybody is watching from the Cumbria Wildlife Trust I don't know if you are but if you are um, you would you might like our um, May subscribers box which is um, badger cups and I'm um, just gonna bring them in, sneak them in here on the overhead camera. Um, you can make two from our subscription box in May, two Badger Babies with pink pads, pink paws, and um, they uh, there's enough in, you get in the box, the, the materials to make this sort of little nest that you imagine they have in their Badger set maybe, and they can be cuddled up together or they can be playing on top of each other, whichever way you want to position them, they are going to be a very cute make. Um, and that is available in our subscription box. Remember, you can subscribe, you can unsubscribe anytime, you can change your payment date, um, you can um, skip boxes if you don't want to do them. Um, and I'm now colouring in the tummy, even though I've told everybody not to do that. So that just goes to show how much I listen to myself. But anyway, um, I, I didn't mean to colour in the tummy, it just happened. Okay, let's cover the rest quickly before I run out of wool, just in case I do run out of wool. So I'm fastening on the wool now. I'm literally just colouring in the little squirrel in the top colours. In the that sort of foxy rust brown uh, well uh, the squirrel kit used to be used to make two squirrels and the other squirrel that it made um, had the muted orange in it so if you feel you want to make this squirrel in a different color in a slightly more red color um, then you can um, squirrels they look different in different lights so we've chosen this color for the most authentic color but if you prefer it being more um a i don't know more of a fox red rather than a fox rust brown then um the muted um red i'm pretty certain it's the muted red uh, muted orange i should say sorry the muted orange is the one that you can use to make um the squirrel and then we have a um a red um an orange top for the tail that you can use as well to um, to use instead of this one. So I'm I'm colouring in my squirrel with the wool. June is um is always a strange month in terms of crafting because it's a bit hit or miss how 
much time you have to craft or whether you have to go on holiday or whether you have to go in the garden or whether you have to do other things. Um, I, I, all I know is I never stop crafting all year round. That's not just because for my work, but I just, even when I used to do a lot of knitting, I would just knit with cotton in the summer and with wool in the winter. Um, there was never this whole thing of, oh, it's too hot to knit um, or crochet. I, I just carry on regardless. But I think it's a little bit different in this country. People have seemed to have sort of a seasonality around crafting. Um, yeah, I don't have that. Okay, whilst I am continue colouring the squirrel, which is a bit boring to watch, I will show you other things that are happening um, over the next couple of weeks. One mostly is that um, our subscription boxes, there is a Zoom coming up to support the boxes for this month. And um, Alicia, who's at the other end here, she is um, hosting those. Um, and they are happening on the 12th of June. That's not long. That's exactly in, in a week, just under. Um, in fact, it's this Sunday. You can join her to... Um, to see what's, what the Makers Boxes are all about, or maybe you already get it and you can uh, make along. make Start making the Budger Babies um, at 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 12th of June. If you go on to Every One A Maker, you can um, ask Alicia, or you can message Alicia via Facebook. You can message the makers if you want to, um, to send you the link to the Zoom. Alicia will get in touch and, um, and make sure that you have the login for the Zoom. Then following from that, on the 18th of June, also a Saturday, um, in fact, um, it is a Saturday, but not also because the one before is a Sunday, um, is the surprise box um, make along. And that box this month is themed, How Does Your Garden Grow? Now, the surprise boxes have been a, continuous, um, a continued success with the makers. It is basically surprise fibers and no, no particular projects in there. It's just a themed box that might give you ideas of what you could make from what you get in the box. But a lot is really down to your own imagination and your own creativity. Hence, the Zoom is a good idea because sometimes it's nice to share these ideas and get inspired and spar off each other. And um, so join Alicia for that particular Zoom. And even if you just want to see what's inside the surprise box, however, we also have a Facebook group called the uh, Maker Surprise Box Spoiler Group. You can join that as well if you need to um, see what is in um, the this month's um, surprise box. It is a secret, so if you know what's in it, don't, don't go around telling everybody. We are trying to keep it as a surprise for people. Some people do actually like surprises, surprisingly. And then um, as, a, as a little social um, thing on the side, on the 19th of June, there is a, a stab and, or a gap and stab, I should say, and people just meet up uh, virtually to um, craft basically bring your makers project Alicia is ho hosting that as well and just have a little um, a little fun time together um, so I've covered that um, we still have got um, a handful of advent wreaths available this is um, a project that we will be doing together during Christmas last year it was a large wall hanging the year before we had a, a set of um, little hedgehogs that we were needle felting this year we're doing a surprise wreath so you know it's going to be a wreath but you don't know what it's going to look like and um, these um, projects are now available to buy we only have a certain amount of them and then they are gone. We will not make more. Um, so do make sure you get your order in. It's um, it's £40 and that includes UK postage. However, we ask you not to add anything else to the order because it's going to be a logistical nightmare if you want something that A, we don't have by the time we post it out, which is in October. Plus, we have to, um, on the worst case scenario, have it sitting around for the next uh, few months. And, um, and we are talking large numbers here. So we don't have the space nor the capacity to do that. So we're very sorry, but please don't add anything else to the order because we will only have to split the order and ask you for extra postage on um, whatever you've ordered extra so if if you want to if you want that then just place a separate um, order please and save us the admin work and um, we've also still got um, a couple of advent calendars left but what's more we're still looking to fill our um, 
our uh, retreat, our summer weekend away, which um, is taking place here at the Forest of Dean. There are no red squirrels, if you're hoping to see some. I haven't seen any. I don't think they live here. Um, but you can see plenty of grey squirrels if that's what you want. Um, so do come and join us to make Eric the Viking or another large posable figure. Eric is tall. He's about 50 centimeters tall. Now, I would say in inches, I have no idea, but 30 centimeters is 12 inches. So he's he is just under 24 inches tall. And um, all materials, all um, food, all... Um, company all accommodation is provided you just need to bring yourself and uh, we get in touch with you closer to the time what else you might need to consider but it's it is literally an all-in treat for for you to to spend time with other people needle felting chatting eating drinking um enjoying the in the um, outdoors enjoying the wilderness center where it will take place in the forest of dean and um, we've mostly got now only got bell tents available. Each bell tent, however, will have a camp bed and they, they are quite nice. I've seen them. They um, will not slept on one. Maybe I should try one for you. Um, and we will uh, dress up the bell tent for you a little bit. So it feels more like glumping, even though it is not glumping. I must I must stress that it is camping. The facilities are really close. You don't have to walk for miles to find the toilets and the showers. And they're all part of the big house where everybody else will be staying. So if you feel you're ready for a bit of um, an adventure outdoors, sleeping, <coughs> which I would prefer any time to sleeping in a bed, um, then then um, maybe this is the this is the time to go for it. Just take a big plunge and just do it. And uh, we will um, I, I will tell you a little bit more about this um, um, over the next few days as well. Right. So that's um, Eric covered. And um, I guess I've told you what's happening. Um, I think I've pretty much talked about everything I need to talk about. There's some other bits I could I could say, but I don't want this to be just entirely promotional. Okay, I'm. Uh, this is taking quite a little bit longer than I thought at first, but that's I think the nature of um, making the coloring in smooth. So I'm going to um, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue doing it. Basically, there's no way around it. And hoping that I finish in time because what needs to happen still is I need to make ears and I need to add the eyes and um, stabbing him all over. So this is a lot of stabbing. This is where the stabbing takes place to get the squirrel done. And um, the parts that you're not coloring in, this is the large page, last, last page. So, um, yeah, I guess... Add a very thin layer of bleached white over the mouth nose area. Further define the shape of the head, making cheeks and felting a dent at the eye socket. So this is what my um, squirrel looks like at the moment. He looks a bit like a brute, but I haven't felted him down very well yet. So I'm going to continue doing that. And I think that bleached white or the tummy stays at least white because it's meant to be like that. But you also cover it with a bleached white um at the end as well so that is what you've got that other white for at the moment i'm just using the fox rust brown to color the squirrel in still this is inevitably going to be a rushed finish at the end so i want to give it justice as much as i can but um, um it might not be as perfectionate as um, i want it to be so i will just have to stab away and not get distracted too much I definitely want to show you how to do the ears, so I will get to that in a minute. But I haven't covered the legs yet, so I'm going to do that next. Maybe I need to do that overhead, and then you can all watch me do this. Right, if anybody has got any specific questions that I'm not covering here right now, then please do ask away. A lot of it Alicia can answer directly in the chat. Um, otherwise, if it's something that I need to answer in person for the benefit of everybody, then she can um, certainly tell me that in my ear as well. And remember, we will pick a winner very shortly before the end of the two hours so that um, we can announce it during the live stream with the exception on Thursday when it's restreamed on Facebook. Obviously, that will only be announced in the comments because I won't 
I won't know that until it actually happens on Thursday rather than today, which is Tuesday. Okay, right, nearly, nearly there, nearly there. It is a big project. If you've never needle felted before, it's definitely a, a more ambitious project, but it's not impossible. Um, you should be able to do it. It is very clearly um, step by step, especially if you are also watching the tutorial and you've got the kit. Everybody learns in a different way, but you might benefit from doing both, watching the tutorial and also looking at the instructions, at the picture instructions step by step. If any of you have spotted, we've changed our colors on the website slightly again. I think this is sort of the final thing now. Won't touch it again now for God knows how long. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I think it looks really lovely. Um, and Alice, who is our creative design manager, she's done a beautiful shop job, job with all of that in our shop and our website. So I'm really pleased with it. If you um, don't get our newsletter, um, you're missing out. Subscribe to our newsletter. You can go onto our website. There is a link that um, allows you to put your details in straight away. And um, the newsletter uh, tells you special promotions. You get um, a link to our free tutorial that is featured on the website every month. We do have uh, copies of the newsletter that we print as well. So you will get that one in, in, a, in an order if you place an order with us. Um, up until the last few days, we've had a lucky dip on wool. We've stopped that now. So we've, we, um, you, if you're placing an order now, the wool, the free wool uh, promotion is lo no longer happening. That has come to an end. Um, but we have lots of other exciting things happening, including our 50% flash sale, which is happening on the 9th of June. So 9th of June 2022 from 5 p.m. until um, 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, so set your alarm if that is what you need. If you're normally asleep during that time, it's British summertime. Um, or at least set your alarm so that you don't miss out. I expect a lot of stuff will sell out. That's my suspicion. Um, and, and also um, it's only seven hours, so you might miss it if you're not there on time. Um, and we are going to the Creative Craft Show at the NEC from the 20, so it's the 24th, 25th and 26th of June. It's a three day show and we are also running workshops there. And the workshops are a storm in a teacup. Um, the gardening mouse is a workshop. And there's one more that I just cannot remember for the life of me. Um, I will remember it by the time I'm there and running it, but um, I've been wrecking my brain and short of looking it up, I can't remember it. Um, but you can go onto the Creative Craft Show website and, and the workshops, some of them might you might still be able to book. Some of them might be uh, booked out. I, I genuinely don't know. I haven't looked recently. So this is where it's all about positioning and, and shaping and working the details. Some of you can spend hours on this. Some of you might be less um, patient. So you might want to finish this a little bit faster. But um, whatever you're doing, do it to please yourself, not somebody else. That's what I always say. Make sure that um, it's your project. You love it and nobody else can talk you into anything else. But the finishing touches can potentially take probably longer than everything else that I've done so far, um, as I'm finding out here myself now. I'm gonna give the squirrel its um, colored chest now with um, the other wool that's in the kit. Just need to identify it, there it is. So that's a, a much, much lighter color. And you probably want to keep that so really soft around the edges. So less is always more. So I would always like uh, apply it in really um, little strands. Now, if you've kept the chest white as you're meant to, you won't have to fight the darker color underneath because you'll have the lighter color underneath. But I got a little bit carried away. So my mine has uh, ended up with a, um, a brown brown tummy so I'm gonna to have to work a bit harder to make it nice and um, white again and then we work a little bit more on the face and then I'm gonna call it a job done because um, the time will be up yeah we've got about 15 minutes so I'm gonna work on the ears next and then if there are some finishing touches I will finish them off 
um, at the very, very end. Um, do give us the thumbs up if you liked the tutorial. I think numbers have dropped down people watching live because it is a long tutorial and you can re-watch it. Not everybody has got two hours in the middle of the day. Um, you can re-watch it, you can rewind it, you can pause it, catch up with it, go on to the next step. If need be, um, if you are making a long, or maybe you just need parts of it, maybe you've got the, the most of it and you just need to be reminded, how do I do this tail again? Or how do I need to do the pause again? Then just uh, fast forward to this particular spot. Um, this is a free tutorial. It's there for you, to suit you. It's there to um, accommodate your needs, not mine. And um, and so therefore it is stays on YouTube as many, many of our other tutorials so if you have anything else that you are curious about or want to find out we have a playlist we have a playlist that purely deals with fairy makes we have a playlist that shows you a lot of hacks of how to use our products and we've also got um, sort of how um, make-alongs what we call make-alongs so they're projects they're often based either on our kits or book or other ideas so they are all free there for you we um like i say we don't charge you to um join these to watch these tutorials as many others do they are completely free a lot of them have the standard of um a master class as well some of the techniques are very particular and specific we're giving them all away for free because we're nice people Right, here we go. I'm not going to do more on this um, squirrel chest now. I'm going to concentrate on, on the ears. I can see white patches there still, so that's really annoying me. I'm going to cover that up a bit more. And um, it's it's going to get a little white, um, sort of, it's not a white snout. It just has a few white, um, wispy bits around its nose. And I'm going to do that next. And um, there, I'll show you another trick. Um, because it's sometimes really hard to apply wool in such a thin way that it actually looks literally like a dusting. Sometimes you put it on there and then it looks way too too much. So to, atta to attach sort of wool around, you can attach it around its lower part of the face and nose and felt it down. But if it looks too much, you can pull it off and then um, the, some of the white white wool might just stay behind. Um, I don't even need, I think I need to do that here because it seems to be just literally giving it a, a dusting. But if you've put too much on, just tear it off and you might just have the amount that stays behind is maybe just exactly what you actually had planned to put there in the first place. So it's, um, it's a little white nose that we're giving the squirrel. Barely visible, barely. And then you're going to, um, you're going to make the ears. That's the order of how you're doing things. So let's make the ears first and then do the eyes at the very end. So the ears, are uh, you use the um, the same wool that you've used for the covering of the, um, the, the squirrel itself. You have two pinches and uh, one for each ear. And you take one and fold uh, one pinch in half. Let's make that less wispy. Fold it in half like this. And then you fold the sides in towards the center, which um, is like this. And the folded parts become the outside edges of the ear. And then you lay this on the mat and you um, felt this now flat on the mat into sort of a little triangular shape, I suppose, the best way of putting it. So these are the wispy ends. I'm not felting those, I'm just felting that um, folded part at the top flat. When you felt anything flat on the mat, you have to keep lifting it off and then felt it from the other side as well. And then that's one ear. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same on with the other ear. So have your wool like that, fold it in half, fold it in from the side got your little triangular shape at the top, which is the ear shape, and the rest stays wispy. 
fill that down. Ideally, you're making two ears that are the same size. I feel this is a little bit smaller than the other one that I've made. But you can also make the um, ears still smaller once you've made them. And I'll show you how in a minute. Right, two ears. Um, yeah, this one definitely feels a little bit bigger. I'm just trying to felt it down a bit more into a smaller size and making it a bit more pointy. So to make them smaller, you can just felt them down more. Um, at the moment, they have sort of quite a lot of wisps here at the end. I might just tear some off. I only need a few wispy ends because these are the ones that are op get opened up like this and then put onto the head so that um, the squirrel's ears are, uh, um, are facing out, outward rather than forward. So you've got them on the side here, side top of the head. Fasten them on by stabbing into these wispy ends that you haven't felted um, on your mat. They're, sort of, they're, they're good to attach do this on the other side as well. So the two ears face outward. You can adjust the positioning of the ear, just get them on for now and then um, if you need be you can adjust them if they need to be further apart or whatever. What's very distinct with um, squirrels is that they have um, sort of almost little tufts of fur on top of the ears and um, we're fastening them on separately. You actually were meant to do this while the ears are still on the felting mat, but I didn't do that. I didn't I didn't spot that until just now. So you can do it whilst they're already fe ready felted. Just take little wisps of wool like this and fasten them onto the top of the ear and felt them on on both sides. So you can do that when the ear is already finished as well and then do it on the other side as well. So they're meant to look like little tufts of fur sticking up rather than um, neatly felted uh, extensions. They're literally just little bits, little wispy bits stuck on top of the ear. So it's like furry bits like that. And, um, and then you add a little bit of white on the inside of the ear. that in now. Do it on the other side as well. And now we need to um, look at the eyes and in the instructions what we're doing is we're actually um, mixing a little bit of the white wool with the brown wool to make a new lighter mix. So I'm just laying the two colors on top of each other, mixing them to make a slightly lighter mix. Um, on here, it actually says you use the wool, the, the, you use the bleached wool, like a really thin, um, wispy layer. But I think it works better <coughs> to mix the wool um, with a bit of the, because it looks like it's a really thin layer because it's got a bit of brown in it. And you lay that onto the side of the squirrel's head where the eyes are going to go. And that um, helps. You could have done the same with a snout. Rather than adding wisps of white, you could have just mixed a little bit of wool and make sort of an eye socket here. And that is where the eye is going to go, just here. Looks quite cute. And uh, you do this on the other side, maybe do this on the other side um, first before you add the eye, making sure that they are obviously symmetrical. So I am checking the positioning and that looks pretty symmetrical to me. There. Yeah, we can see also that that shapes the head a little bit, makes it more narrow once you put the eye sockets in. And then you need um, the eyes from the box. There they are. You need, uh, definitely need some glue. We use our glue stick. We've got big eyes. Squirrels have got big eyes. Two glue in eyes on a, on a, a pin. 
and you use your needle to poke a hole through the head by going in where the eye socket is. You might hit the wire, so just be careful. Once you're um, almost all the way in into the eye, then just give it a bit of a jiggle, the needle. Insert the eye. There. Hmm, there's an interesting question coming through from Alicia. I don't, I don't actually know how long people can keep things in their shopping cart. Um, I've just noticed that I've covered literally all of the um, white up. So before I glue it in, I'm just going to put a little bit more white around the eye. Because um, I, d I genuinely don't know how long um, you can keep things in a shopping cart. Maybe somebody can tell us. Um, I think it stays in there for for a long time. But I don't know. It's a good question. Um, are you sort of trying to get ready for <laughs> for the for the um, the ninth? It's a really good question. I have no idea. I need to ask that question um, at back at the workshop. Um, don't know if anybody knows this. I don't know what the settings are on our um, e-commerce shop. No idea. What you see me do here now is add a bit more white um, because I've covered all of the white up with the eye. And um, and it does need that white around the eye just um, to um, as a nicer feature. And now I'm going to use the glue stick. And I think, Alicia, you can um, definitely pick a winner now. And I'm just going to add a dab of glue behind the eyes without taking the eyes out and then pushing them in properly so that they can now be secure and dry. And that basically has sort of added the eyes into it. The ears are nice and fluffy here. And um, as a final touch, you use a little bit of this brown that comes in your kit. You use, use tiny, tiny amounts of brown. And you're just giving your squirrel a little nose. I'm just making a little round shape here. And so we've got two winners. We've got Diana O and Eva K. Yay, two winners for our a 15 pound voucher on Tuesday, the 7th of June. And there will be different people on um, Thursday, the 9th of June. So well done to, to Eva and to um, um, Diana. And I should also just say that if you get a code sent through for a discount and you are making use of another discount, our website can only cope with one discount code. So if you are now thinking of using that £15 discount voucher, um, once you've emailed us, we will send you a code. If you are thinking of using that on our website during the flash sale, it's it's not possible because we can our our a website can only co cope with one code so you can only make use of um, one or the other code so it's either the discount code or um, you're getting the 50% off. Um, I thought I should preempty that because uh, we can that this is just how the system is set up we, there's nothing we can do we can't override that it's just how it is. Right I've just added a tiny little um, nose and mouth into here um, and I, I consider this is finished, to be honest. I would probably um, work on this a bit more myself. Um, the face now is quite solidly needle felted compared to the rest of the body. It's got quite a cute little stubby nose. Um, they often have lo slightly longer faces, but this one is what it is. He's definitely got big ears. Um, he's got, um, he's got um, cute little eyes. He can hold his um, um, whatever hazelnut or um, whatever he's eating, he can hold quite comfortably and he can also sit on his haunches quite comfortably as well. So I'm going to show you him on the large camera because that always works better. There we go. What's he got? Oh, yeah, that's oh, that's the white in his ears. I could have probably made that a bit more wispy. It looks... Um, there we go. There's uh, the squirrel. He has got some bare patches which I can cover because I've got more wool but probably running out of time now because it's exactly two hours um, so we would love to see your squirrels show them to us once you've made them and um, and well done to the winners of today's competition um, yeah 
got two squirrels now, they can sit next to each other. There you go. Oh, mine is a little bit smaller than the other one. But um, that's all good. Two squirrels saying hello to you and um, waving goodbye all at the same time. Thank you very much for watching. Just glance another, another, uh, um, oh, Pam's just uh, joined. Hi, Pam. Hope you're still here. Um, just came in time to see you poking a poor squirrel's eyes. He's looking amazing. Thank you very much, Pam. And um, that's it. All good. Yes. We're all, we're all good. We'll see you all over the next few days. Remember to uh, take part in our felt, um, felt off, the make the great makers felt off, make a cake or similar things, yummy things and share the photos with us. Watch out on our social media feed um, so you know where to post your photo and uh, you will be in for um, a, a, a price draw on that as well, a surprise price. And, um, and then we also have another campaign or another promotion or another um, whatever you want to call it birthday treat where you can uh, share um, your needle felting love with others and um, and we reward you for it and of course the big sale on the 9th of June 50% off for exactly seven hours because we're seven years old the wool anniversary uh, in 2022 and I will see you all on Thursday the 9th again um, if not any other time if you're watching any other time well done for tuning in, giving us the thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and uh, looking forward to seeing you all next week.